case tonight is a murder. John Gasper, a London restaurant manager, was killed just over 11 weeks ago. The manner of his death strongly suggests that somebody who knew him must have been involved in his killing. But tonight, detectives believe that viewers who may never have heard of John Gasper might be able to help discover who did kill him. Our reconstruction starts in the West End of London, where he worked. The Pizza Pomodoro in Big Street, London W1. It's on the north side of Soho, five minutes from Regent Street, and it's busy from lunchtime till late at night. John Gasper had several partners, but as manager, he virtually lived in the place. It was a year since he'd started there, and literally hundreds of customers, particularly the women whom he made a special point of talking to, would remember his chat and easy charm. John Gasper was something of an entrepreneur. During 1986, he'd been hoping to expand and had been looking for new businesses in London and beyond. He'd made inquiries in Hull and had recently visited properties in Taunton in Somerset. He used his Camden Town flat almost like a hotel. He rarely got home before 2 a.m. He'd bring a carton of milk from the restaurant for breakfast, the only meal he ever ate there. The flat was comfortable and secure. He never felt the need to double lock the door. If anyone wanted to get in, they'd have to obtain a key. Penny for the guy! Penny for the guy! It's Wednesday, November the 5th, five days before John Gasper died. In Kensington High Street, West London, is Bannum's, the specialist locksmiths. Sometime that day, probably during the morning, an expensively dressed couple were waiting for service. Other customers might recall an argument one of the salesmen was having with a man who couldn't prove his identity. You can ring my solicitor. No, we need to see some proof of ownership before we can re-register. You can ring my estate agent. The couple seemed uneasy and rather self-conscious. An expensive beige car, perhaps a Mercedes or a Daimler, was parked outside. Someone wanted a duplicate key to John Gasper's home. Can I have a kick up, please? <laughs> I'll just take the registration for you. The letter of authority with Mr. Gasper's signature on it was forged. But the man had one of Gasper's rate demands and his key. A second key was duly cut. Here's the rates demand and the registration card. If you could ask Mr. Gasper to complete it in post of access and here's the key. Five days later, Monday the 10th of November, the day of John Gasper's death. Berwick Street Market in Soho. At about 5 p.m., Mr. Gasper popped out of the restaurant to pick up a suit from the dry cleaners. How's things? It's all right, thank you. How are you, all right? Very well. Over the next couple of hours, he certainly went back to the restaurant, but it's still not clear whether he went anywhere else or met anyone else in that time. The Gardens Health Club in Kingley Street is a couple of minutes' walk from the Pizza Pomodoro. John was a regular client, and we know he checked in at exactly 6.50 that day. Great. Okay, see you later. Thank you very much indeed. Bye -bye. John spent about an hour there. He used the sunbed every other day. As he was leaving, he bumped into a business associate, Doran Zilka. Just the man I was looking for. How are you? Fine, I'm just popping to the restaurant. I'm going around there now. Come with me. Fine. OK. Bye, Melanie. Bye, Melanie. The two men hadn't seen each other for a few weeks, and they had various joint business ventures to discuss. Zilka was there until about 10.30. During that time, he remembers John spending quite a lot of time talking on the telephone. And he also remembers something else John mentioned. Um, in fact, I'm leaving early because I've got to meet some. Apart from his intentions to leave early, John Gasper seemed his usual self. It was just a normal weekday evening at the restaurant. He ate just before midnight, and it was after that that he broke with his usual routine. Socky. 
got a very important meeting early in the morning and I'm leaving now. Can I have a pint of milk, please? Yes. yes. Will you lock up? Give the keys to Tiziana so that she can open in the morning. Yeah. All right. All right. OK. Yeah. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. He may have had two appointments then, one that night and one in the morning. If he did have a meeting planned for that night, police have never discovered where it was or who it was with. They do know he left in his partner's green VW Golf, which he often borrowed. His flat is in a small block overlooking Camden Road, about a couple of miles due north of Soho. From forensic evidence, it seems he could have got back there any time between 12.45 and 2 o'clock, and he was probably alone. His flat was on the third floor of Julian Court, and as he took the lift up, John Gasper probably had no idea that someone was already up there waiting for him. John Gasper was shot as he walked in the door. No one else in the block heard a sound. Detective Chief Inspector Ian Blair is investigating the case. First of all, what more do you need to know about where John Gasper went on the day that he died? We've looked into that day very thoroughly, Sue, but obviously there are gaps. He popped out of the restaurant from time to time. He made lots of phone calls, like the one that was shown on the film. And we need to know who he spoke to and who he saw when he popped out. Above all, however, what we really need to know is when he left that restaurant, where did he go and who was he with? It looks as though he was probably alone and he drove home alone, but it might be that this meeting that we're missing was somewhere else and he picked up his killer. So we're really very interested in anybody who saw John on that night. Right. Now, going back to November the 5th, Guy Fawkes Day, when somebody got a duplicate key to John's flat from Bannum's The Locksmiths, you need that couple to come forward. I need that couple to come forward. I also need everybody who was in Bannum's on that day. It may have been that couple who had the key cut. It may not have been. It may have been somebody else. So I need to know anybody who was in Bannum's on Guy Fawkes Night. That rates demand was genuine and so was the key. How do you think they got hold of that? Well, it would have been possible to get hold of the rates demand from the communal sort of postal section of his flats and the key must have been stolen. But the letter, that was forged? Yes, that was forged. I've got it here. It's grey because it's been fingerprinted, but it's on white paper. And this letter here is not in Gasper's writing and it's not Gasper's signature. Now, it's possible that the Bannams end is something that Gasper arranged, but we don't know that, and it's a very, very important clue. It's unusual writing with the little circular dots on the eyes. Extremely unusual, and we'd like to hear from anybody who knows that writing. How much do you know now about John Gasper himself? Well, that's really the main point of the appeal, Sue. We've looked into this man's life. It's a very private life in compartments in which one compartment doesn't know another compartment. And in that life, there is nothing which gives an indication of why he was killed. This is a very premeditated murder. There's the key. There's the appointment to which he was obviously going. There's a diary that's missing. He wrote everything in that diary, and we have never recovered it. And it's likely that the appointment was in that. And what we're really looking for is what is it in John Gasper's life that we don't know about that has led to his death? Somebody wanted him dead, and they wanted him dead so badly they are prepared to go to these lengths. So I want to hear from anybody who knows John Gasper and who has not yet contacted the police. Mr Blair, thank you. And if you do, and if you can help, please call now on 01 811 That's 01 811 And remember, there are detectives from the case here in the studio, or you can speak to a BBC researcher if you prefer. And there are lines open now to the incident room in Kentish Town Police Station. Their number is 01 725 3782 or 3786. That's 01 725 3782 or 3786.